Hey everybody, welcome back to Mastering Avantra. My name is Brenton O'Callaghan and this is part two of the I've installed Avantra, now what do I do? In part one, and I'm going to switch over to my screens here so I can take you through this, in part one we configured our basic Avantra system here um, and we added a number of servers. So the first thing was we had our Avantra master server itself, uh, which we had pre-configured, but then we went away and we added an Avantra agent to an existing operating system that we had in place that was running an SAP system. So we installed the agent and we configured the agent to monitor that machine, which was an Ubuntu 2004 machine. After that, we logged into that SAP system and created a service user using the provided Avantra roles in those two transports. Remember, the first transport contains the code that Avantra runs, and the second transport contains the role that we use, which is a really, really granular permission role so that we're only able to access the bare requirements um, for monitoring your SAP system. Once we had that service user in place, we then went in and we configured that SAP system NPL by providing the RFC user or the service user we created, the password, the client to log on to, the um, SAP uh, database ABAP schema user, the password, the database host, the port, the database name, um, and we sent that configuration to the agent on the machine. That then deployed all of these out-of-the-box checks by default for that SAP system, um, which, as you can see here, are in great shape. Now, at the time, the eagle-eyed amongst you will remember that one of those ones, which is the DB Connect, was actually red when we finished the session. And we thought it was just a delay in the reporting of the agent back for, um, from the actual agent on the server itself. As it turns out, and I'll show you here what I mean, the history here was this was red about 40 minutes ago. Um, Actually, as it turns out, it ret returned a logon failed, telling me that it was unable to log onto the database. Why was this? It turns out when I was configuring the system, I fat fingered the password on the SAP SA. I typed it incorrectly. Um, so once I corrected that password, bang, everything started working straight away. So that's what we covered in part one. If you're interested, please go back and have a look. If you have any questions, please send us a note. In part two, we're going to cover two major pieces of functionality. And it turns out there will be a part three. Um, but for part two, we're going to cover the connection of your Avantra system to your cloud. So in this case, I'm going to connect it to my AWS instance and show you how to do a synchronization and set up constant synchronization between your AWS uh, installation and your Avantra system, so you keep your systems in sync. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to set up a database. Very simple. And you know what? I'm going to start there. So if I go up here to systems and I go into databases, you can see in this system, I actually have no standalone databases configured. Now, just bear in mind that yes, we have SAP systems and yes, we're monitoring the database of those SAP systems, but you access that through here through the SAP system. You don't access that through the standalone databases as listed here. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a non-SAP system database to your Avantra installation. So I'm gonna say new. And the type I'm gonna add, add here, as you can see, we do a DB2, MSSQL, Oracle DB, um, SAP DB, SAP HANA, of course, SAP IQ, which was new in version 20.11, SQL Anywhere, Sybase ASE, and HANA System DB. In this case, I'm just going to go for a very simple MSSQL, which I'm just going to call MSQL1. Uh, the system role is test, and I have the option here of monitoring from an agent on the operating system uh, sitting below the database, or as I'm going to show here because I want to show the functionality, I'm going to do remote monitoring. So here I get to select any of the other um, servers within this customer to remotely monitor this database for me. In this case, I will not be installing an agent directly onto the operating system. And that's okay, that's the way I want it. So I'm gonna select this one here, GDEV CD MA AAVASRV to do the monitoring for me. As it turns out, that's where I'm running my Avantra master server. So I'm gonna do the monitoring from there. Okay, great. So now we have our database MSQL1. Um, but we haven't given any information about it. So let's provide a host name. So I, as I prepared earlier, gdev cd msql1 is the name of, of the host name of the, of, the, of the server. Now I'm using the standard port uh, 1433 for my MSSQL server. I'm not gonna bother specifying it in this case. I don't need to. I'm just gonna connect to the database called master. 
and I'm very bad practice, I'm just going to provide the administrator username here. Um, obviously, if this was a real productive instance, you would be given a specific, probably locked down um, database role to do the monitoring for you. In this case, I'm giving access to the crown jewels. So I hit apply, and I'm going to switch on monitoring for this server. So I'm going to say cascade, there's nothing to cascade to, switch on monitoring, and hit OK. And then I'm going to send this information to the agent. Now remember, I'm doing agent agentless monitoring here or remote monitoring. So I've sent this information to the agent on my Avantra master server, which I've instructed to then remotely monitor across the network to the database that I'm talking about here. This should be pretty quick. Okay, done. Just like that, I hit refresh here and I'll do the same here so you can see. They've gone green and I know everything's working because I can see here database info, MSSQL version 15, last modified, etc., etc. Now, if I pop into checks, now, if you remember when we configured the SAP system, we got a load of checks applied by default to the SAP system based on that type. Databases are the exact same. So in a few minutes here now, we should see this list grow to about four or five um, different checks as it checks and it'll check stuff like for example how much space is left on your database um, and how much space is left on the log volume can i connect to the database and all that kind of fun stuff so it's it's doing that setup at the moment and um, i can also apply different monitoring parameters and um, if i want to as well please check out our documentation if you want to learn more and um, but there's loads of of um, parameters here you can apply specifically to this database or, and there's a great mastering of Antra video on this by, by my colleague Tyler. Oops, let's get rid of this. Um, there, there's a great mastering of Antra video on this by my colleague Tyler. Tyler. You can do parameter sets where you can say, every da test database of the type MSSQL, I wanna make sure I apply um, MSS backup exclude as an example. Um, and that way then you can apply parameters monitoring parameters to groups of systems rather than on an individual basis. So ju just a good example and just something I like to mention that this is an option as well for you to work through. All right, so that's our database configured. Don't have to do any more here. The monitoring is on, the host name is there, the username and password have been provided. We can see all the information about the database. Let's move on. So the second thing I wanna show you today is how to connect to your cloud. Now. At the moment, I have two servers configured here. I have AVA SRV, which is my Mastering of Antra server that we're looking at right now. And I have an SAP NetWeaver system called NWDE2. Um, but I actually have another server sitting up in my AWS account. Um, and I wanna synchronize that to my Avantra server here. So how do I do this? So if I go into configuration and into integrations, you'll see I have an option here to configure cloud authentications. Now, out of the box, Avantra supports Alibaba, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, and of course, ServiceNow. In this case, I'm gonna go straight to AWS. And I'm gonna say, Brenton, uh, AWS account. Um, I'm also, uh, so again, bearing in mind that Avantra is multi-tenant, you may have multiple AWS accounts, or you, know, you might just have multiples anyway. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna say Brenton's AWS account is part of the customer mastering Avantra. This is very important because it means that if I'm doing a synchronization with this account, it will only synchronize to that customer. This is a really powerful feature. Okay, so now I have my Brenton's AWS account. I could put in a description if I needed to, but now I need to provide some credentials. So let me pop over to my AWS management console. Now, to show you what I'm dealing with here, I'm gonna pop into EC2. And you'll see I have one instance running. I guarantee you've more than this running if, you, if you're running an AWS instance, but I literally spun up a T2 micro instance just sitting in EWS 1A. And I'm gonna copy that for later. Um, but you can see here that I have an instance running. It's a very basic instance, and I'm gonna destroy it once I'm finished. Now, I need to sync this information to Avantra. Now, I could go ahead and manually enter it. Sure, that, that's an option but that seems very tedious um, and thankfully we don't have to do that. So if I pop back into EC2 and up to my account here, I can go to my security credentials. Now, in an ideal world, what I'm about to show you here will be done by your AWS admins and guess what? They're absolutely gonna lock this down. They're gonna create a specific account with specific access um, to specific areas of your AWS account. Um, 
For me right now, I'm just giving access to everything because I'm just showing you how it works. But it does say here, root user access keys provide unrestricted access to your entire AWS account. If you need long-term access keys, we recommend creating a new IAM user with limited permissions and generating access keys for that user instead. Absolutely, you should do this. Please do follow their, their instructions. And um, for now, I'm just gonna show you the principle of how you connect us. You can go ahead and restrict your permissions from your AWS account later via your AWS admin. So I'm gonna generate a new access key. And um, for those of you who are gonna try this access key and good luck typing it out uh, as we go, the minute I finish recording this, I'm gonna delete it, so no worries there. Um, so I'm gonna say show access key. Yes, you can all see it, but it's not gonna be there if you actually try and use it later on. So I'm gonna copy this access key ID here. I'm gonna paste it here. And I'm gonna copy my secret access key here it's very secret and I'm gonna put it in here and say apply. Now, I can test it, let's make sure it works. Hit test and we get this nice cloud authentication okay pop-up. Avantra could successfully authenticate to cloud service Brenton's AWS account. Um, so just a reminder, what are we dealing with here? If I go back into my EC2, you'll see that I'm running one instance on EU West 1A and uh, this is what we're aiming to synchronize to our Vantra server. Okay, but what do I do now? Okay, I've configured my AWS authentication. That's great, we know it works, it's good to go. But I still don't see a server. Hmm, that's because you haven't set up a synchronization. So this is a three-step process. Step one was what we just saw. We configured our authentication to AWS and assigned it to a specific customer within Avantra. Step two is going to be configuring a two-way synchronization, or a, 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 sorry, a frequent synchronization, I should say, between Avantra and AWS. And then the third one is where we start to see the synchronizations occurring and we should see a new server pop in here. So let's do step two, let's set up the synchronization. This requires admin privileges, as a lot of the functions I'm showing you do, but if you pop into administration and synchronizations, we can create a synchronization in here. So here I'm creating a new inbound synchronization. We're sending data into Avantra. So we say new in inbound synchronization and we're going to say AWS EC2 and we're going to say uh, mastering Avantra AWS sync. Hit create and now we get to, I'll just make this a little bigger, now we get to provide a lot more information about this synchronization. So I'm gonna say the AWS authentication. Now, remember we configured the AWS authentication already. As a result, it's available for me to select here. So I select Brenton AWS account and I copied it earlier, but it, it, you, you very much wanna limit one synchronization to one region. It, it just makes it a lot cleaner, trust me. Um, and I'm actually gonna pref or suffix this with EU West 1A. So here I'm specifying the AWS region as EU West 1A. One of the reasons this isn't a drop down is because we want this to be future proof, um, but also there are situations where there are custom regions to, um, uh, specified, et cetera, et cetera, or new regions. Um, so we've made this a free text field, which is why it's that way. Now, you can also define filter criteria to filter the instances. So for example, if you only want instances that meet specific criteria, you can do this here um, just by doing a plus and putting in those filters. There's a lot more information about those filters in docs.aws.amazon.com as we link to there. But let's test this query. Oh, you must apply your changes. Let's apply the changes and hit test query. Okay, great. First thing it tells me is, hey, we found an instance. So if I see here, it's this instance here with this very pronounceable name, T2 Micro. It's the same one I showed you earlier and it's running. Um, now, what I can do here is I can say system type. I'm gonna sync the servers. I'm gonna sync them to the mastering of Antra customer. The default role for anything I do sync is test. I can do some additional attribute mappings, um, you know, based on, hey, I want to make my uh, server name equal to a specific EC2 instance attribute, as you can pick up here, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and do I want to start monitoring? In this case, I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna say no. Um, for synchronizations, yes, create new servers if they don't exist. Yes, update any modified servers. And yes, if the servers get deleted from my Amazon instance, delete them from here as well. We'll hit apply. And then finally, we hit sync. Please make sure you test and verify the results of your query. Yes, we've done that. Go.
There we go, we created an object, this one. Now if I pop back over to servers and refresh my screen, lo and behold, there it is. We've done a synchronization to my Amazon AWS uh, account. And you can see here it's picked up on the physical server name, the FQDN or the IP address, the host alias, what cloud it's in. I can start or stop the instance because remember, Avantra has an automation platform built in and we're able to do that full stack start stop. So when we talked about the SAP system we saw earlier, if it was running on this instance in AWS or GCP or Azure, we're able to say, stop this instance from the application through the database, through, right through to the VM itself. So this is really, really powerful. Um, and we can build those automations up into daisy chained automations of patching OSs, for example, and so much more. It's really, really cool. Um, so it knows it's in AWS, West 1A, instance type T2 micro, there's a link to the AWS console if I wanted to. Now, I'm not getting a lot more information here because I haven't actually installed the agent on this machine. The insta installation of the agent is exactly the same as what, as what we've done before. We did it in the previous video in part one. It's the same process. I'm not gonna go through it here, um, but you're logging onto the box. You are downloading the agent installer. You're running it. You're providing access to a Java runtime environment. And that's it. it. Once you've done that and you get the agent up and running and, and switch on monitoring here, this will appear and you get all the information about this box. Okay, so this is the end of video two. So in video two, what did we cover? You've just seen me connect my Avantra master installation to our AWS account and I've done a synchronization between the two. So I've done a synchronization of any servers that are up in my AWS that are not on my Avantra master, they'll be created. If there's an update to the server that exists on both places, they'll be updated. Um, and if there was a server deleted from my AWS account, it would be deleted from my Avantra master. All of that configurable. And the second thing we did was we set up a database. So MSQL1, you can see here all the information about it. And actually, if, as, we, as we come back here now, you'll see that there's three more checks been shown. So originally we just saw DB connect, which was making sure we can actually connect to, to, to the server. But in the meantime, about six minutes ago, it started to apply these out of the box checks that we provide for MS SQL installations. So database usage, so 75% used, um, log usage, 0% use, used. And here you can see this has gone amber by default, warning us that the database master uses simple recovery model. So there's no transaction log backup. Again, really useful information, all provided by Avantra out of the box the minute it detected what it had, what it was um, connecting to. Uh, and so you get some really cool value out here. And of course, these are all configurable. So let's take log use or database usage as an example, right? So the master size is four megabytes, use space is three megabytes, and um, 75% usage. Actually, I can configure this check and say, you know what? I wanna make this one, so my usage should be marked as critical, MS, SDB, usage critical. There's more information there if you want it. Um, at the moment, it's at 95%, so let's make this at 40%. Just like that, we hit apply. And now this means the next time this check is run, it's gonna apply the threshold of 40% and that will go critical, it'll go red. Um, so let's check, let's execute now, send the command. Um, and in a few minutes, that'll report back that, hey, you're using 75%, you specifically specified that for the, the checks on this server, it needs to be no more than 40%, I think is what we said. And um, so that'll come back critical at that point. There we go, MSS DB usage. Um, so now we get to go in and we can see it's using more than we wanted it to use. And uh, if we go into configure check, you'll see we were looking for 40% um, as opposed to the standard 95. I'm just gonna delete that um, so we don't get this error going forward. So that's it. So we configured our database, we configured our AWS integration, and we did a, a synchronization from our AWS account down to our Avantra master server. So that's it, that's the end of video two. There will be another couple of videos coming over the next couple of days where we're going to cover that mass upload functionality that I talked about where if you have a massive on-premise installation, whether that be servers, databases, SAP systems, you can mass upload them to Avantra using our command line interface, which can be very useful for those large installations or even for small ones where it just might be a bit tedious to input the information. So I'll take you through how to use that command line interface in the next set of videos. But for now, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.